Hello everyone and welcome back to Do We Know Them? Episode 58. I literally cannot keep a straight face. What in the actual fuck? What I would do? You don't have to, you, you don't have to do away with. No, not on me, not on me. I Damn know, it, you I know I would have busted that thing out if I had it. Remember when we told you that we were not gonna cover Colleen Ballinger anymore? Unless she responded, I did, that was the caveat. It was like, okay, we won't unless. Well, she did. Respond, she did, for sure. I know that if you're watching this, you've 99% probably have already seen it. Holy shit. Jesse and I were originally like, ooh, should we not watch it? Should we just like react live? Well, we have no self-control, so we didn't do that. But I still have not seen the last two minutes. Same. I don't know how much you left off, so we will have some of it be a surprise, but we're gonna rewatch the whole thing because it seems worth rewatching. It's funny too, because the day that we're filming this is the day we uploaded our interview with Johnny, who is the ex-fan and employee of Colleen Ballinger. And the comments on this video are all, oh my God, her, she just responded. Have you guys seen it? We know what the next episode is gonna be about. Like everyone is blowing us it's up. It's funny, I haven't even had time, like, which again, sorry that there was such a delay on the interview, guys. It was just one thing after another. And the episode from I, hell, I no not because of Johnny, Truly. just because of technology. No, it was just doomed. So I haven't even looked at the comments yet because I was getting ready because we were going to film anyway. And then I got a text and all it says is, Colleen made a video. There's a ukulele. I read it and I was like, that can't be real. Like, she's kidding. There's a lot to cover in this video, which is why this is the only topic we're covering because we are going to go through the entire thing. And don't worry, I downloaded it because my first thought was this is not gonna stay up. Like, it's not possible. Number one, it's not possible that this is real. But number two, if it is real, she is not gonna keep this up because the way she is getting reamed for this response is out of control. If you had the audacity to make this in the first place, you might have the audacity to keep it That's up. a really good point. But but I also want to say, I think that a lot of this, like I am absolutely laughing at Colleen for it, 100%. It's disgusting, actually. It's, that's what I wanted to say. Do not mistake our laughing at her ridiculousness and audacity for us not, because we are going to be covering it and like also reminding everyone and showing you guys what it is that completely disproves everything she's like trying to address. So this is a very serious situation. And we have to remember that there are victims involved in this. We have Johnny, we have Adam, Becky. I mean, there's so many people who are forced to sit down and watch this fucking bullshit. And I personally know that when you are the victim of someone's bullshit and they come out with some crazy shit like this, it is debilitating. I even secondhand exp from experiencing that. And also I feel like maybe a slightly different one because I had more of like a defensive, like how dare you say that about my friend? Not even just about like, I'm, well, I guess I am mentioned in a few of them too, but it's like your whole body just like fills with rage. Oh yeah, my heart would immediately start pumping and I would just get so hot. Like literally my cheeks were hot. I don't even know how to describe it. Like the only other time I've gotten that kind of feeling is when you're like in a very, like a screaming match with like your sibling. Like where you're just so mad you don't even know how to contain it. This, I don't have as much of a personal connection to, so I will say that I'm sure is why I am laughing at it so much more. But I was gonna, even before you said that, I was thinking, I should probably throw out there, I'm, this is not funny, and I think it's absolutely disgusting that she's discrediting victims by basically saying this is all, what did she say, toxic? Toxic uh, gossip trait. That's literally how she's, I can't. Obviously, I think it's very wrong. She's discrediting and just like, it's awful. But it's almost so awful that I think even the victims probably are watching and laughing because it's like, like, this is obviously not the same caliber of like what it is that they posted, but this is the same level as like the Logan Paul said for us video. It's like, you had to film this, you had to edit this, you had to up, like all of these chances you had to change your mind and you didn't. Every video I've ever put out like gets, I run it through the people closest to me in my life, obviously, because no matter how self-aware I would like to think I am, everybody always falls short. And even in the videos you guys have seen make the cut, I had people in my life be like, I don't know about that part. And I take it out. I'm like, okay, well, fair enough. So who saw this <laughs> and said, yeah, looks good to go. This conceptually, this was flawed from conception and I don't, it didn't take one wrong turn. It was just like, oh, you know, there was no wheels on the car when you started driving it, right? But here, wait, let me read you Megan's because we've seen so many people in the past where we're like, oh my God, why isn't someone taking their phone away? Because we know that even people that I'm not close with in my life would be showing up and being like, this, no, give it, hand it over. Literally. Also, uh, today's Wednesday and I'm moving on Friday, which is very, very soon. So my mom has come up a few times this week and she came up today, even though I was like, I'm gonna be really busy, you guys. <laughs> 
when I got the first text, I was like, oh my God, mom. And I think I've told her multiple times about this whole thing, but then I mentioned Colleen and instantly she still has no idea who I'm talking about. I start watching this on the TV and even her reaction was like, what is this? I will admit though, because my mom was there and kind of distracting me a little bit. And also Jesse and I were just like jaw dropped on FaceTime, confused at what was going on. And I was like a minute ahead of you. So I was just like, ah, and you were like, what, what? We were both panicking, like actually panicking. But so now I'm excited to see it again. I mean, excited is a weird word because it's like such a conflicting, like I don't want to see it again, but I do, I can't look away. It's a hundred percent a train wreck you cannot look away from, but shall we begin? I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I almost feel like aside from knowing what she does in it, I really don't think I got a good grasp of what she was saying. Um, also, can we talk about she put it on her vlog channel? Of course, because isn't that the way it goes? First of all, the title is just hi, period. And then the thumbnail is her looking down all sad, right? It was uploaded four hours ago and it says it has 229,000 views. Oh, let's read the... <laughs> The description. Oh, that, this is great. This is just rich coming from her. I do not condone or support any kind of online bullying or hate towards anyone ever. What about all the fans you were shit talking? Oh my God. I will reserve my opinion for when we get to that part okay, of the video okay. because I have thoughts. How much should I resist pausing for us to add commentary? Well, that's why we dedicated the whole episode. Yeah, I was gonna say, because I, I know I know we're gonna wanna do it. Yeah, that's like why we dedicated the whole episode to this. So let's just, as it feels natural for us. Just making sure. I just, I didn't wanna be annoying. Um, Should we do one last cheers and gulp? I literally, this is like, I think my second. We day. discussed, we yeah, need two cheers. beverages for this. Let the dumpster fire begin. I love that anyone starting this without any context doesn't know that she's gonna whip out a ukulele. There it comes. Ukulele, let's go. Since you saw my face, no, I haven't been doing so great. So it's been I everywhere. A little break. So a lot of people are saying some things about me that aren't quite true. Doesn't matter if it's true though, just as long as it's entertaining to you. I don't know if I would call child grooming entertaining. I think this is uh, bringing some flashbacks to situations we've seen where people have this misconception that talking about something, even talking about it repeatedly, is using something for entertainment. Now, although we may try to obviously make, let's say just our show in general, we can only speak on our show. We do try to make it entertaining because we don't wanna bore people. But really, I have been pretty vocal about the fact that covering her has not been fun for me. Like it has been very heavy, very intense, very serious in a lot of ways. We, we actually love to be more entertaining than her topic has been. Like I don't like covering her but we have to. And I even said to someone the other day, my friend was just visiting and she was like, how do you describe what you do to like other <laughs> adults that like don't necessarily watch YouTube? And I was like, I mean, I still tell them it's like, we're like a podcast that covers internet drama slash we also kind of dip into some celebrity stuff too. And then I paused and I go, but we never really intended to get as dark as we've had to go lately because all of the scandals have not been, like I tweeted even recently, remember when times were simple and we could just laugh at how unfunny Deaf Noodles was? Honestly though, it, it really frustrates me when people try to take this, like not to pause so early and get into a whole discussion, but like it does bother me when people try to write it off as like, oh, you just all just love this like circus. No, dude, you did something fucked up. People found out and we're talking about it as we should and as the people who suffered at your hand should. It's such bullshit to write it off as like, it's entertaining for you. Like, it's like, no, it's not entertaining for anyone, Colleen. My biggest thing, I did a little Twitter rant the other day about how, I guess, it was behind the scenes, a lot of people were saying that she was maybe um, prepping to sue for defamation. I kind of go through this whole thing being like, First of all, it's not defamation if it's true. Second of all, even if it was and your lawyers could pull off some like miracle win of the century through some like semantics and just like loopholes, the internet's already seen all of these screenshots and stuff. Like this wasn't a he said, she said situation. This was like you getting exposed for things that you definitely did in videos that are still live and in text that leaked from things that you never thought would leak. So what would be the point in suing when, if she put the money and time into doing that, it would tell me all I need to know about her because that's not a person that's taking accountability. That's someone that wants to make this go away. And then she comes out with this. You guys having fun? All aboard the toxic gossip train. You're chugging down the tracks of misinformation. The toxic gossip. 
massive train You got a one-way ticket to manipulation station Toxic gossip train Tie me to the tracks and harass me for my past Cause rumors look like facts If you don't mind the gaps I won't survive in the crash But hey at least you're having fun. No one's having fun, Colleen. What's really funny is people like this tend to love to say vague statements like rumors look like facts when you don't mind the gaps. You know what would be helpful, Colleen? If there are gaps and if these are F all rumors and let's say if these text messages are doctored or if all this information is false, it would be helpful if you explained how that is so because otherwise you're just spewing a lot of crap that doesn't mean a whole lot. You're literally just saying nothing, but they always do this. They're always like, everybody believes everything. Okay, explain further, please, so that we know what we're believing when we're not supposed to be. Like, hello? I just think it's so frustrating when people just pull this bullshit because maybe her diehard fans will be like, oh my God, I knew this was all rumors. But in reality, there is no proof. She's just playing a ukulele. Well, and so question, because that's what I think is so crazy. I'm like, to have the confidence to do this, when I've already said, like, to what I've seen, which like, I mean, I'm not really <laughs> too infiltrated in the Colleen or Miranda Stan community, so I don't know where they congregate, but I haven't seen a ton of support for her. I've seen a lot of fans say, I am a fan and this is disappointing and I don't want to support her anymore. I just don't know how you get delusional enough to have the confidence to come out with this because like, does she think she has enough support that this is going to be enough? It is a severe lack of self-awareness and it is a very, very large character flaw that she's proven to have where she literally does not have the wherewithal to look at this and be like, oh, cringe, never mind. Like this is something that like maybe if you sang it in your shower just to let it loose, girl, I won't tell nobody. How dare you even excuse that? No, no, I mean, listen, I'm not saying it's right, but if she really needed to get this wonderful song out, she could have done it in the shower when nobody else was watching. To wait two weeks or three weeks now, I mean, it's almost three, been a three. month. For her to wait that time to develop this, it really speaks to her character. It is out of control, lack of self-awareness. It begs the question. You're a musician, you are. You've written songs. Stop. How long do you think this little ditty took her? Oh, I thought you were gonna ask like what I think of like her performance. <laughs> I was like, oh, can you re-perform it for us right now? Dude, honestly, and I don't mean to sound really mean because I have plenty of live performances that are incredibly cringe and I cannot even think about them because they will make me wanna die. But she sounds like Miranda. I'm the last person that can comment on people's voices. <laughs> she's literally going to say gossip. I mean, honestly though, I feel like that's the character she's played more than herself. So it's like, she probably can't help it. It's like Austin Butler taking on his Elvis accent. <laughs> Oh my Except, God. Like, much oh more God. unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, she got too deep. Too lost in the sauce, as Ken would say. <laughs> okay, let's just keep going. We're, we're getting, we're getting going. Going. So, Sorry, sorry. One more note. My mom, who literally couldn't give two shits and left, I think, probably mad at me because I was like not helping her clean and I was too focused on this. And I was like, you don't understand, mom. This is important. This is my job. She <laughs> looked at the TV and her first reaction is, she's only playing one chord. <laughs> But I was like, oh my God, I love that that is what you're taking away from this. But true, it was very lazy. Uh, hi everyone. I've been wanting to come online and talk to you about a few things. It's taken um, a while. Even though my team has strongly advised me to not say what I want to say, I recently realized that they never said that I couldn't sing what I want to say. I don't think I'm caught that that was the catalyst for why we're listening to her on ukulele right now. Her team is punching the air right now. And that's all I know for sure. Well, so follow up. Have you ever seen a video where someone goes, you know, my team told me I probably shouldn't do this. And then have the video go well? Because I can't I think can of think one. I can think of some, but I can't think of one that follows up with a ukulele song. I have to admit. Yeah, I only want to talk about the facts. So... Hope that you'll be willing to listen. Here we go. You don't say anything though. Many years ago, I used to message my fans, uh, but not in a creepy way, like a lot of you are trying to suggest. It was who's trying to suggest that, or was it the screenshots that we saw of your creepy messages? I'm just, I just want to know. I'm gonna let her finish, but I have thoughts. It was more of a loser kind of way. Yes. Where I was just trying to be besties with everybody. Clearly, it's that's still like, a problem. Uh, when you go to like a family gathering. You know, and there's a weird aunt there who keeps coming up to you and going like, hey girl, what's the tea? And you're like, Ugh. Um, that was me. I missed that the first time. I have to be honest. Ma'am, you, you're not related to them. You're not their aunt. And also everyone hates that aunt. Let's 
dissect this little portion because it's actually pretty much the only portion where she admits that she did something fucked up, but just doesn't seem to realize it is exactly fucked up. like she acknowledges the underage messages thing. We have eyes, Colleen, and unless you want to get on here and tell us how those screenshots were manipulated or photoshopped or whatever the fuck, if that's what your defense is, which obviously it doesn't seem like it is, but if that is it, come on here and prove it to us or. We're all gonna remember what we saw with our own eyes, which is you asking Adam at like 13, 14, whatever the fucking age he was, but he was a minor, what his favorite sex position was. Okay, you sending nudes of Trisha Paytas to them. I'm never gonna let anyone forget about the tampon video. When an underage fan was asking for period advice because she was so young that she had just gotten her period and you sent this fucking video and we're gonna play it. I swear I'm not high. <laughs> you sent that to a group of minors and then you asked them to have them send you the same thing in return, which to me seems like a fetish. But not only that, you took it a step further and had your fans come to your show having tampons on them. They were minors at the time. And then you took a picture with them with the tampons in their mouth. Hello? This is not you being a creepy aunt. This is you being a fucking creepy adult, period. I was gonna say, P.S. I think if the creepy aunt did any of that, that would be just as not okay. <laughs> she literally is like admitting to it, but is that unself-aware or in that much denial? And they weren't interpreted as creepy. They were objectively creepy. I think what's really bothering me is it's not creepy just because you're an adult and they're a minor. If you were just messaging people, like they were damning you something and you were if answering If there was no that. sex stuff. Exactly. But the levels that you went to and the oversharing, like you quickly say like, oh, I overshared. You talked about your ex-husband's dick with minors. And I'm sorry to be so foul about it, but that is what the fuck you did. And the new husband, and then trying to get revenge on the old husband. Like oh yeah, didn't Adam say that she would talk about her current husband, like her sex life with her current husband as well? Yeah, he had a bigger dick apparently. Hello? Like, am, am I in the twilight zone? You weren't inappropriate, you were out of control. Can we insert um, the two clips here that in the past week she's been caught saying these casual jokes uh, during her show? Both of them are along the lines of her like, alluding to this subject and then laughing about it. And her husband is like about to pee his pants. He's laughing oh so Oh my God, hard. I remember it vividly. So one is basically her husband telling her like, oh, I have the most wonderful wife in the world, basically talking about her. And she's like, well, that's not what I heard. Are you married? Yeah. <laughs> to the best, best woman on the planet. Oh, what I heard. <laughs> hey. And then the other one, play. It's been a crazy, just kind of, few years in general. Life is crazy. <laughs> There's so many things to say, and I'm not gonna say those things um, <laughs> now. Oh my God, I can't. It's just such a lack of any sort of like tact or poise or anything. Like you had all this time to be able, Jesse, she was busy writing this song. Oh my God. <laughs> I really wanna know how long it took. That's one thing about this song or this whole video. You have to understand, I mean, if it's not obvious to people, maybe it's just cause I was in theater. This is so painfully pre thought out. Like I'm talking from the mannerisms. I don't know how many times she actually like had to take shots of it, but like rehearsing it, she did it. In in front of mirrors, her like crafting every single like- Oh, her husband. Sigh, oh yeah, her husband probably watched her do it. Every single chuckle or look off, she practice it. Like if you have ever done theater in your life, this is so painfully cringe theater girl that I can't even handle it. And I'm sorry if I'm being really mean, but actually I'm not that sorry right now. It almost reminds me of when um, Johnny was telling us about how she said in the past to him that um, she would base some of Miranda's like tantrums on Trent and that she would study him. She literally like studies herself, I think when she's doing this. She is doing this as a performance. This is a monologue that she is doing via the ukulele of all things. But in group chats with my fans. It was weird. I've been sharing my life online for over 15 years. I've poured my heart out to you, and because of that, I feel like I'm talking to my friends. But in the beginning of my career, I didn't really understand that maybe there should be some boundaries there. Why is she acting like this is all stuff from like 2012? Out of every thought that we have, my follow up thought is why is she singing this right now with a ukulele? 
Like genuinely. I'm like, you're talking about your lack of understanding of boundaries with minor fans, but you're singing on a ukulele. Am I in the Twilight Zone? As someone who has had to put up, unfortunately, response videos and understands the time and effort and thought that has to go into it because you understand when you're making it that a lot of people are gonna see it and you want to carefully craft what you're saying because if you don't, like you don't wanna make a mistake on a video like that because you understand the gravity of it. Mm -hmm. The audacity to do this is so beyond anything <laughs> I, I could say. Found. So how far on your list was um, a ukulele response that it didn't Okay, make? good question. So it would be like, first of all, it would be like a response video in general, right? Because that takes like a decision, like, okay, I'm gonna respond. Then would be maybe death, and then would be ukulele video. And I'm not even joking. Really? Okay, this is, I'm, I'm not even trying to be morbid. I, halfway through watching this, thought to myself, if someone was off camera pointing a gun at me saying, you have to film this video, I'd say, just take me. And I've done some embarrassing shit online, not this. No, this is where I draw the line. I would jail. wake up in cold sweats every night of my life. We're only two and a half minutes in. Oh my God, like, I know, I know. Okay, there, keep going, keep going. There, there's eight more minutes. There were times in the DMs when I would overshare details of my life, which was really weird of me. I haven't done that for years. To see, because I changed my behavior and I took accountability. Okay. Mm, when? Mm, mm, when? Mm, 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 mm. Hard pause. Accountability is Jenna Marbles sitting there, and I've referenced this multiple times, sitting there showing on her laptop things that she was ashamed of. That is accountability, and that is painful because accountability is painful. That's what Colleen thought she was doing with her last video for sure. And she was relatively specific, I will say, but again, I don't even think people were bringing the things she apologized for up, but she wasn't doing it for the Jenna Marbles reason. And she was doing it to detract from people being mad about Adam because if she would be so honest about all this horrible racist stuff and animal stuff, then why would she be lying about this when it doesn't seem that bad in comparison? It's not even that. It's just that accountability, number one, is not something that necessarily you do one time and it's a one size fits all. That's it. You never have to talk about it again. It's not a transactional thing. I would say it's possible that she's changed. I don't judging by this, I don't actually believe that. But let's just hypothetically say it is possible that from the time that she was messaging these minors, she did change. Maybe she doesn't do that anymore. Maybe she does look back at her behavior and, and thinks it's creepy. That is all irrelevant in the court of public opinion. When so many people understand what you've done, it is your responsibility and that is a part of your accountability to get on here on your platform and say, this is what I did and this is why it was wrong. And this is how I understand it was wrong. This, and you're just saying like, I changed, like I took accountability and that, that's it. That's not how this works. And also you didn't, you literally lied in your last video about Adam, exactly. manipulated videos to make him look worse. And then you sent fans to go ostracize him from your fandom because you didn't want him to spread any more shit. Then we even saw recently that after he came out with his video, she texted her group chat that he was not in anymore and asked them, do you guys have any proof of him talking about me before all of this started? And it's like, Bitch, are you joking? Yeah, we have not mentioned that, but she has gone around fishing from her fans still to try to like figure out when did Adam like craft this big girl. That one was from like 2020. So that wasn't like oh, super gotcha, recent, gotcha. but still that's much more recent than her acting like these are like old, 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 like no, it was three years ago. And it was after you took accountability. You know what it's giving? It's giving like the guy that cheated on you a million times and gets annoyed that you're annoyed with the fact that you like, he cheated on you. <laughs> and he's like, Bro, that was forever ago. It's like, well, but you did it, didn't you? Don't tell Pearl that. <laughs> it literally is just so gaslighty, and I hate that fucking word. Trust me, I do, but it's just, it really is. It's like, you're sitting here being like, I changed. Nobody cares if you haven't done it, which actually I have my doubts about that. I don't believe that for a second. If you haven't done it in a long time, but you did it and it hurt a lot of people. And there's a lot of people just now because they've just become adults realizing what you did and they're allowed to process it in any way necessary. And it is your duty to apologize and acknowledge what you did. And if you don't want to do that, at the very least don't subject us to your ukulele playing. Well, and the fact that in her fucking caption, in the description, it's a, I do not condone or support any kind of online bullying or hate towards anyone ever. So. What about the hate that you gave towards the girl that had the tattoo after you about Ella when you were making fun of their gender and their freckles and like their, their chronic illness? You were exposed 
for doing you're cruel. Uh, just that about your young fans that you're claiming you were loved, like you loved, and that were, they were your. I think that like, people like this thrive on maybe the story being too large and convoluted for people to actually pay attention to details. But the people who have paid attention to the details and who have seen all the coverage on this understand, Colleen. That you are cruel. Listen, For I could be a bitch. Aspects. I'm not saying that like I'm an angel or Lily's an angel or anybody's an angel. But you're a cruel person. Like in your heart, you have hurt so many people. And maybe it is because you're hurt as well. And I'm not here to like understand or like psychoanalyze you or understand why the fuck you act the way you do. But you are known as the person who is cruel to other people. And what I'm saying is not even based on hearsay. This is like backed up by number one friends. You have Shane Dawson confirming this. You have so many people who have experienced your your cruelness that it's like you can't get on here and be like oh like you guys are all just not understanding like it's just she's trying to play this part that doesn't fit because we all know who she is well she's playing the victim of course but then also another thing that i think was in my probably in the same thread about the court thing at the end i go hey I wouldn't want to be in this situation either. I can't imagine having the whole world coming for you and releasing uh, all these screenshots. But guess what? I didn't spend the last decade in chats with minors, so I don't have to worry about that. It's not even just that. I think that, you know, like I have so many, like, let's say just videos that I made a joke that I wish I hadn't made, or I said something or story time about someone that like actually hurt them or things like that that I did that I'm really not proud of. And when those things have been, you know, like people have brought them up or said something about them, even be behind the scenes, my first reaction, although it fucking sucks, okay, to have people be like, what the fuck was that? You know, whatever, it does suck. And you feel very like, just initially like, ah! My initial reaction has been like deep shame like deep shame to be like, what was I thinking when I said that? Or why did I say that story about that person? That was really fucking rude and mean. But at the time, yes, maybe I, I wasn't thinking, I was just like, oh, let's do entertainment and let's just do it. I understand why I did it. It doesn't mean that it was okay and it doesn't mean it didn't hurt people. So yeah, the natural reaction is to be like, shit, I fucked up. And like, that's okay. Cause everybody fucks up. That's the thing is she's really kind of trying to fall back on this whole, like how we've even said, which we've described this as the problem, but then she's using this as her excuse, it feels like, where YouTube celebrities are a new thing and people didn't have this kind of access. And she's basically saying, and Joshua Evans, her ex, was basically saying the same thing. It's like, we got famous and we didn't know how to handle it. Nobody okay. does. I understand that fame could get to your head. You don't know how to handle it. It's a new thing to navigate. But I'm confused when all that you are describing these chats that we've seen where you are explicitly inappropriate, you're making fun of fans, like you're doing all the stuff you're blatantly saying you didn't and you describe it as just like, I was in chats with fans and me, it was weird. Colleen, this wasn't a mistake in a video or maybe two videos, or maybe three videos. This is chronic between dozens of individuals. This is dozens a of lives consistent pattern. Pattern. altered. I just can't understand how in her head, she doesn't understand the gravity of it. Because again, everybody who's been online for at least a decade, has something online they're not proud of, right? Like, I feel like that's like the standard. It's like, nobody's like perfect and everybody, especially like when people used to like lean into more crude humor and like just be just a little bit more gross in general. And we've talked about this um, off camera, I think. I don't think I even brought it up in the video that like, I have seen people digging and trying to find anything to make her look bad. So it's like, they'll pull up her doing like my shower routine. Okay, of all the things that we're looking at right now, I feel like that is the least of the concerns. And like, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like we didn't do like, bath products and like we even censored ourselves to like pretend we were naked and we, were, we weren't. But also we were all over 25 and there was no minors involved and our audience wasn't like 12 year olds. So that feels a little different. But even then, I don't fault her for that stuff. I do maybe uh, think she should have not ever, like when was there a time where you could put child porn in your title? Cause she did. Oh my God. No, yeah, it's too many things. That's what I'm saying. It's like every direction you look, there is something problematic that she's done. And yes, I know she's been on the internet for not a long reaches. time, but it shouldn't be this chronic. Like, it's like, okay, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has those days, but this is a little bit too many days in a row. You know, that's all it really is. And what it comes down to is like, Colleen, the, the behavior is too chronic and the people you've hurt are allowed to talk about it. So anyway, we're, we're pausing way too much. I'm so sorry guys, but anyway. But that's not very interesting, is it? So let's go on the toxic gossip train. The locomotive's fueled with hateful accusations The toxic gossip train Steamroll over someone's reputation 
Jesse, music expert. Is this is that called a hook? What she's doing right now? That that would be considered a chorus, pretty much. Oh, is this the chorus? Uh, I was gonna say the fact that it. I has mean, it's a hook, a chorus, or, or yeah, whatever, whatever you want to call it, called. but something she keeps I'm just like, like calling back to. The fact that it has one it, for the like what uh, we don't, we already heard this part. Move on. All over someone's reputation, toxic gossip train. Hop on board, but close your eyes, otherwise you'll realize. The train is made of lies, and that person you despise maybe didn't deserve to die, but hey, at least you're having fun. Deserve to die? I think that she's doing the thing that you kind of reference a lot, where it's like, she's getting death threats type of thing, which we always say is too far, obviously. Which, again, too far. Don't, But yeah, it's always what people that, jump like, to, where it's like... <laughs> I'm getting death threats. Like, I understand it's horrible. And of course, I'm not saying she doesn't have a right to mention it. It just feels a little deflecty. And, and, and not to minimize their impact and how that might affect someone. But also, if you realize that a lot of death threats, I know I received a lot during my um, Donald Trump retweet oh, scenario. No. They don't seem particularly concrete. I'm not locking my door the second after I read that. I like, have also received a lot of like kind of empty th death threats, obviously, like online, just people who are like, I'm gonna find you, bitch. And I'm like, Okay, cool. See you later. Okay. <laughs> but it, yeah. it does suck to read. However, Colleen, you know who else is getting death threats? Adam McIntyre from your fans who has posted not just empty death threats. I'm talking the most foul shit I've ever read in my life. They've been doxing him. Like literally. Oh, they've doxed, they've doxed him? I know he like p filed a police report because people were doxing him. Dude. So let's not sit here and be like, I'm getting, girl, we're just speaking from our own experience. Obviously, I'm not trying to minimize it because anybody that goes out and sends a death threat to someone is an idiot and no, absolutely is fucked. Yeah, do exactly. It. And you ruin things for everyone else because p then people don't get to take account. I mean, they end up getting out of taking accountability because then they become the victim because so many people are like, well, don't be too yeah, hard. Yeah, that's what I was referencing when I was like, this is something you bring up a lot. But I'm sorry, the shit that I've read that Adam has to read and also he has been experiencing this since he was like 19 years old in the spotlight being fucking thrown all this heinous ass shit from your fans, a simple description that you don't condone hate isn't gonna offset that. I'm sorry, and maybe this makes me a little bit insensitive. Maybe I'm too like close to the situation, like we've been covering it too much to have any yeah. sort of like empathy for this. But like you singing about you receiving death threats to me, it's just not, it's not hitting right now. I'm like, no girl, like the lack of self-awareness is absolutely insane. In all seriousness, I do think it's really important to hold people accountable for their mistakes. Um, you know, we should hope that Fair everyone can learn from their mistakes and grow and change their behavior and be a better person. And this is something that I've always tried to do when I make mistakes, and it's something that I will continue to try to do. What? Oh, you don't care? Oh, okay. I thought you wanted me to take accountability. Yeah, we don't care because it's bullshit. Oh my god, it's so pompous. It's so pretentious. I, I literally cannot handle it. First of all, I was listening. So, uh, I mean, you could have kept going. That was the first, like, you were trying to actually get real for a second. Then you're like, oh, you don't care? Well, that's convenient timing. Like, that you cut that off. Here's the thing. is like, even in a much nicer world than we live in, which I know we do not. And she had, like, very much changed. She, like, realized she had this kind of weird behavior going on. And she made a shift, made some changes in her life. And it's been on the straight and narrow towards not messaging 13-year-olds from now on. But would you say accountability is pretending that never happened, slightly calling it weird, then um, kind of trying to have all of your fans go against someone that brought it up in the first place and now claim that you've changed so no one can get mad when no one knows you have changed because you never told anyone that it was real to begin with. I literally just find it so fucking funny that she was just about to get to any sort of point where it's like, oh, we're actually talking about accountability and like you, the, how you think it's important. Oh, you cut it off because of a weird joke that nobody gets. Well, well, she keeps mentioning these lies. What are the lies? I'm telling you, they rely on vagueness. They rely on it because it's the only way that they can maintain some sense of like innocence in this situation, but not really have to show anything. It's just like the lies, girl, elaborate. Like you mentioned, they rely on it being so spread out across every social media platform. There's receipts, there's, there's all these screenshots. No one knows what's like, there are some people that think this is still just about like the Adam lingerie thing. She doesn't get, her, get specific because she can remain vague in case some of those people are watching. So they're like, yeah, this is bullshit. And they can agree with her because then they don't get to find out about the other That stuff. is so fucking true. And I have had friends in my life be like, okay, are people still fucking on about that lingerie thing? Like, but, and I'm like, 
are you joking? Like, give me two minutes of your time. And I tell them and their, their jaw is on the floor. So yeah, people do rely on that vagueness to survive situations like this. Especially though, because her things, it's not just one thing. It's not like, oh, inappropriate video clips are surfacing. Oh, some inappropriate screenshots are surfacing. No, it's literally so many different aspects that are all coming out at once that very much all work together to paint a picture of a not good person. It's not, you made a mistake. It's, you have a bad care. You have bad character, it seems like. But that's not the point of your mob mentality, is it? No. Your goal is to ruin the life of the person you despise while you dramatize your lies and monetize their No! Device. Yeah. Um, I feel like I can already hear the comments on this video. She's gaslighting, manipulating. Oh, she's a narcissist and a rat. I would never make a mistake like that. Oh. Oh my God, this is theater cringe. Like this is a theater, theater horror show. This is this is absolutely foully cringe. I know the word gaslighting gets overused a lot, but the definition is making someone feel crazy by telling them that something didn't happen when it did. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, that is literally what she's doing right here. Yeah, I didn't realize that all of you are perfect, so please criticize me. Bring out the daggers made from your perfect past and stab me repeatedly in my bony little back. As I mentioned earlier, I would not like to be in this situation. I That sounds terrible. My worst nightmare, have millions of people hating me. But to what I said earlier, I didn't spend the last decade in chats with a bunch of kids. So yes, I'm sure I fucked up too. Not like this girl. That's exactly what I was saying earlier. It's like, yeah, everybody who's been on the internet for a decade is not proud of a couple videos they put up because they made jokes that were rude or they did things that were like, oh, I was being a bitch or whatever the fuck the case is. Not everybody can say, oops, I was in a bunch of group chats with minors talking about their favorite sex positions and asking them to send me videos of them shoving tampons into their mouth. Not everybody can say that. And that isn't a mistake. That's a, you need to seek help. And that we don't know that from people just saying it. We no. know it because we saw it. Should we play the video again? I'm sure you're disappointed in my shitty little song. Yes. I no, your shitty behavior actually. Oh, I was and like, yes, I am disappointed in your shitty little song. To that. I am so, actually yes, very both. disappointed. I know you wanted me to say that I was 100% in the wrong. What percent would you say? Why are we talking percentages? We just want you to say you were wrong. Like that's the thing is she thinks that people are like asking for so no literally just say you were wrong. That, that'll do at least a little bit. Even if you were gonna still hold up the narrative which might be true that she hasn't done this in literally three years is the max. I because know. it was happening yeah. three years mm -hmm. ago. So uh, like if you want to keep up that narrative even sure but you're not. She's literally acting like she made an inappropriate joke as a joke and then it was cut out of context and people are all just freaking out. It's like, actually, should we get out the list? Um, <laughs> and then just like pull out a scroll. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna take that route. We know. Of admitting to lies and rumors that you made up for clout. Oh, bingo. There's the buzzword. What word. rumors did anyone make up for clout? There is the buzzword. That is the fucking stamp on my bingo card. Made it up for clout. That is what they always, girl, what clout? Adam built his career after she tried to ruin it. It's just so annoying that they always go that route of like, oh, you're using my name for views. Girl, they're talking about their trauma. Like actually. Also, if she wants, fine. Like we, if you want to say we're using her name for clout, are we using Kate Gates name for clout? Like we just, this is what we do on this channel. Exactly. I was like, but I don't know if I'd really describe it in the way that you mean it. You, I feel like are acting like people think they're going, like we're not going to be famous because we covered a couple videos on Colleen Ballinger. How about you fucking used children in your shows for clout? Like you, like what is the definition of clout to you? Because you're manipulating and using people left and right and other people are just talking about it. So who's using who? Well, that's the thing. I was like, so even if you wanted to say that like we were using her for clout, the drama channels are, fine. The victims though? That's kind of, eh, no, you're, you're wrong. I'm sure she is talking about people like us and, you know, people who have been covering this, but she's definitely pointing this towards Adam and Johnny and For Becky sure. and people who have spoken about it too. So that's an extra layer of foul. And which we've always said, when people say that people are just like making up false accusations for attention, what what attention is, like, why would they want that attention? It's not good. I think that honestly, the people that say that, 
and I've always had this theory because people have told me that a thousand times. I think it comes from a place where they themselves seek attention like that in their life, where they can understand how someone would want negative attention or would want just any form of attention. And that's where that like thought comes from. Cause otherwise I'm like, I would never tell someone that because who the fuck wants no, that? And that's the thing. It's the exact same situation when people assume, for example, that you're out to show receipts and get revenge on them because they're like expecting a war and attack. And we'll sit here and be like, wait, do people do like, I don't think most people have the energy for that. But it's that they know that they would want to retaliate and cause this hell for someone. So they're expecting yep. everyone else wants to do that for them. Well, um, I think it's time we maybe take a little break. Um, and if this whole situation and mainly this response video is making you as nauseous as it's making us, then that's perfect because our sponsor today is ZocDoc. Not the segue. <laughs> Which if you guys aren't familiar, ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. And when you're using ZocDoc, we're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top rated patient review doctors and specialists. So you can literally filter it specifically for ones that take your insurance, are located near you and treat pretty much any condition under the sun. And another really cool thing about ZocDoc is the average wait time is between 24 to 48 hours. And you can even sometimes get a same day appointment, which is super helpful because if you've tried to book a doctor's appointment recently, they're out for months. It's insane. My favorite, I mean, as someone with chronic back pain, you call in, I'd be like incapacitated and you call and you're like, oh, I need to see a doctor. Doctor, and they're like, okay, we can fit you in in three months. So this is nice because they actually even show you the schedule. So it's not like, oh, we think we might have available. No, it literally has slots that show you what ones are open. So if you guys want to try out ZocDoc for yourself, you can go to ZocDoc.com slash DWKT and download the ZocDoc app for free. And then you could find and book a top rated doctor for yourself. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash DWKT, ZocDoc.com slash DWKT. And thank you so much once again to ZocDoc for being an amazing sponsor of this podcast. Okay, unfortunately, palate cleanser over. Back to the nitty gritty. We have to keep going. We will, like we said, we will stop. We will stop pausing as much, I promise. Um, maybe not, but we will definitely try. Hey everybody, I found someone new to harass. She did some things that I do not like in her past. So everybody gather around because we're about to attack, but not based on facts. Oh no. Since when are direct screenshots of what you said, not facts? Your loaded lethal weapon is your fingers on the keys. You don't need any armor when you can hide behind a screen. So shoot me down quick, click a click, and bam. My reputation's deceased. Uh, I also wanted to take a minute to talk about that girl Miranda sings. You know the one. Yeah, her? Uh, she's PG-13. It says that on my website, and it's always been that way. And that's why you won't find my videos on the YouTube Kids app. Anyway, um, I didn't realize it was my responsibility to decide what was appropriate for every kid to see. I've always relied on parents to decide if they're comfortable with their families watching my YouTube videos or coming to my live shows. I have a question. Yes. How does that cover the ground of you specifically, and I mean specifically, and there is evidence for this, choosing young boys, I'm talking six or seven years old, that is the that is the person you would seek out in the audience repeatedly. And you would have them come on stage and dig into your pants to get food that you had stuffed in there while you're pretending to be on a date with them and they're your bae. How does that cover the ground of this? Well, I never said that my audience was children or that I was seeking out children or whatever the fuck you wanna call it. We are not talking about that. We're talking about the fact that like when you repeatedly not only seek out like children to interact with, inappropriately on stage. But when you repeatedly meet children, like as a creator myself, the few times I have met children, it has been like a jarring experience where I out loud say, oh my God, why do you watch my videos? Because that is the only reaction I have because the majority of my audience, same, same, demographic wise, same. literally provable by YouTube analytics is adults. You have a ton of children. That is almost your main demographic and you've become more and more juvenile to like appease them or like, just market yourself towards them. I was gonna bring this up later just if we like needed more time to kill since this was our only topic and it was like very full circle. Oh, apparently not. We have a lot to say and there's a lot But shit, um, so two things. First of all, before I read uh, an example that shows 
like that that is not what the normal thinking behind making content should be at least I mean not to say that I'm setting the precedent for high morals or anything but I have a text conversation about something from literally 2017 mm -hmm. where we talk about that exact thing that I'll get to but first I would like to know Colleen what do you mean there's a rating of PG-13 on your website did the MPAA come and rate your content or is that just a self-rating I think she's being sarcastic like oh I don't think she was Oh, I picked that up as like, obviously Miranda's rated PG-13 as if like, obviously she's not. I took that literally. Maybe I'm being dumb. Oh, but well, one I, of us is right. I think she's <laughs> genuinely saying like, no, it's fine for like 13 year olds. But I'm like, did you decide that though? I don't because think so because I, she I'm then says sure like, that and that's why I'm not on YouTube kids. Cause she's like, Miranda is not PG-13. Well, no, 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 but that's the thing. It's, you can be PG-13, but when you're uploading a video on YouTube, it asks now, is this content made for kids? And you say yes or no. But like kids means like seven and under. I don't know. I took that as her being sarcastic, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Hey, you guys weigh in. <laughs> but so full circle, it's funny because you and Johnny in the interview talked about like how never deleting text, like it's sketchy because you like people keep receipts on everything. Mm -hmm. Well, I do keep my texts, not because I'm trying to keep receipts, but I just never delete them. And then I think it is so funny to go back through them later on. Just something random will come up and I'll search. For example, Jojo Siwa has been trending a lot because of Colleen and she has a relationship with uh, Rachel Ballinger as well. And they used to collab back when Jojo was 13, she did collabs with Miranda Sings. The reason that stuck out to me so much, because one, I've seen that video now circulating a lot where she's being very sexual in that video and like Jojo was a child. Well, around that exact same time was when an old boss of mine was trying to convince me that we needed to have Jojo on as a guest on Beauty Break, <laughs> to which I was very against. And I explain in the conversation that I went back and looked at from 2017, he goes, not many people can get 13 million views on a video right now. All I'm saying is it doesn't hurt to take a shot with people who are doing well on the platform right now. Same reason we started covering Jake Paul, even though we all hate him. <laughs> and I said, I agree, but this one we don't feel is a fit. And we've said that, and I don't feel like you're hearing us. You're just thinking about views. Also, same reason I I wouldn't want Jake Paul as a guest. It might get millions of views, but some guests don't make sense. Her, mostly because she's 14, immature, and most likely has a very young fan base. We don't want that audience. Her audience are children. So if we're getting millions of views from her audience, that's not the audience we're trying to capture and it's not appropriate. I'm saying that as a under, severely underpaid producer. <laughs> this is her own like life and channel and brand and she doesn't give a fuck. We weren't even gonna do anything inappropriate with Jojo Siwa. It was just that we maybe make inappropriate references sometimes. So why would we try to attract an audience of kids that are I think it even is more simple Siwa. than the fact that you were an adult and you didn't want to collab with a kid. Well, and I, it's that, just that, that was a whole nother layer because I literally was like, she's 13. We don't want to babysit. Like, no. Literally. I mean, I, I just, I feel like it's just a difference in like just morality base level. I'm not even talking, like you said, not, not saying she did anything criminal with Jojo Siwa, but like wants to collab with Jojo Siwa when she's 13. Uh, not me. I just thought it was crazy how I voiced the exact thing that she says the yeah. opposite of when I like was not like the pillar crazy. of morality or anything. Like I don't, it's just insane. Have I made some jokes in poor taste? Yes. Have I made lots of dumb mistakes? Yes. What are they? Am I sad that there are some fans who feel betrayed? Yes. <sighs> but was my intention to manipulate? Impact intention. It doesn't really matter what my intention was because it seems as though everyone's already decided. The fact that she literally just said that, I'm like, no, because the, uh, I don't. the timing, it's literally, dude, you could have finished that sentence. Like, it doesn't matter what my intention was. I still hurt people. But she's like, it doesn't matter what my intention is. Everyone's already made up their mind about me. Girl, just get one sentence right. Yeah, maybe you should listen to them. <laughs> we know you wrote this in your notes app. Like you had time to Jesus. think. Why? That's unreal. That, that timing was too perfect. On that. Let me tell you, it's not very fun to have millions of okay, people I'm sure. all Stupid the games, stupid prizes. Call you the most vile, horrendous, disgusting, life ruining words that a person can be called, in my opinion. Life ruining um, words. It doesn't matter that these things aren't true. Uh, everyone just believes that you are the type of person who manipulates and abuses Whose children. Whose fault is that? I just wanted to say that um, the only thing I've ever groomed is my two Persian cats. I'm not a groomer. 
I'm just a loser. <laughs> she did not just reference cats. Is that what? Cats? She just referenced grooming her cats. You have had all this time to try to sit with your thoughts and like internally try to understand that's why not, people are so upset. Not, no, definitely not. No, not but that's what she had the time to she's do. She's been writing the <laughs> Literally, as we know. But, and practicing, oh my God, practicing it in the shower. I can't. But like, you know it happened. Besides the point. The fact that this all made the fucking cut and you literally are so purposefully obtuse to the fact that like emotionally you were so inappropriate with these kids and that's why people are classifying it as grooming. We're not saying that you were like, and even then, I mean, the things we talked yeah, about in the yeah, Johnny yeah. interview, go check it out if you haven't. You are fucking weird and your ex-husband's weird as fuck at the very least and criminal at the most. So we need to like be honest and serious you about sent this. a minor porn. She was just being quirky and weird. She was that just a wasn't loser. A, sorry for my inappropriate weird behavior. She was just a loser. <laughs> I'm like, no, actually you were just fucking like completely insane. Who didn't understand I shouldn't respond to fans and I'm not a predator even though a lot of you think so because five years ago I made a fart joke. When I saw this, I literally, there's, uh, and I know we said we wouldn't pause so much and I, uh, it, it is getting late and I do have to go. This one, what, this yeah, one, this, this, this the is most. the point that was so so if you don't know, what she's referring to when she says, because I made a fart joke, that's not what happened. What happened is that you brought a minor on stage who was dressed in an outfit that was not, number one, no outfit would have been appropriate for the joke you made. But she would definitely wasn't, you know, appropriately dressed for this bit. That she even prefaces in her TikTok explaining that she purposely dressed a little more revealing because it was like encouraged because she knew Miranda picked people that weren't as conservatively dressed to come on stage and participate. So she conditioned her fans to dress more provocatively. Literally, because it was just part of the bit. And then you brought her on stage, a minor. You spread her legs on stage, spread them wide open. If you spread my legs that far, I would literally break. Like literally, what are you snap. doing? They were, it was, <laughs> I mean, literally it was, it was insane. And you spread her legs. And then as you did that, yes, a fart played. So like a fart noise or a fart sound effect. And what's interesting about that is that I didn't even notice that. I, no, I was literally just going to say, I can only speak for me, but I didn't even know a fart was even a part of it because I watched it on mute. Yes. And, and like, I, it was so not something that to me was important to the situation. Least but what's really interesting interesting about that and is a point that Lily has brought up is that TMZ was so disappointing in the way that they reported on this. The main reason being is that they minimized that joke, which was bringing a minor on stage who was not dressed, you know, in a way that was appropriate to spread her legs as if, again, anything would have been appropriate. And you minimize it to just a, the fart noise playing. Like, oh, she made a bad fart joke. That's why people are mad. No, people are mad because you made a girl feel so horrible. She literally was talking in depth about how it affected her in her life. She was saying like it affected her confidence. She, her, she was still developing her body. This is the title of the article. YouTuber Colleen Ballinger losing sponsorship deals over teen fart stunt. And I read that and I was like, what the fuck is the, what are they even referring to? Like, how about the child grooming accusations? What, like that is, a, like there's no singular thing that would have lost her sponsorships. Then I click on it, but it's the video of Becky. And I'm like, okay, I just watched that TikTok where she explained the entire situation. I don't even know if she mentioned a fart in like occurring. So then I read the article. Not only does it refer to it as a fart stunt, it does not even mention once even allude to anything about minors, children, any inappropriate interactions or behavior, grooming, the, none of those words are even at all used, except what I found the most interesting is they do paraphrase, they don't quote, but they paraphrase and say that Becky said that she was traumatized and embarrassed or something from the situation. But they don't say her name, they don't say where that comes from. They don't say where they Which got Which is why that we quote. speculated for a while. It's like, okay, maybe she had some PR people for or sure. she knew, like, it's kind of like when Ned from Try Guys SNL covered them and like conveniently left him out of the joke and made him seem like the mm -hmm. good guy. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to think like, okay, this person knows somebody in TMZ or whoever, like her PR people are working overtime. The fact that she also, I feel like from my side confirmed this by this now sitting here bed. being like, oh, it was just a fart joke. 
is just very telling. They literally act like she, this girl got embarrassed because of a fart noise and they just disregarded the rest of it and didn't even mention anything and then conveniently left out the source where she also in that same video where she says she's traumatized explains not only her experience but everything else going on. So it's, it's not irresponsible or like bad reporting. It was an intentional omission of facts that they left out on purpose, which I said, absolutely. Someone fed them this article. This was planned. The fact she referenced it, I'm like, you're stupid. I know. Like she has to feel, I mean, not really. She could be just totally delusional, but like she has to feel like she does have enough fans that will buy this, that this is enough to save the amount she needs to just like keep on kind of have, like to kind of live her Shane Dawson experience or existence where it's like, not like where you were, but you're still like paying the bills. I don't know. I guess for me, it's just like, how are we going to expect a person who's done all this shit to act? Because we know how she is. So like, what is she going to do? She's not going to... No. Not I, this. I can tell you with full confidence. This was not I was what I say, was Not this. We didn't expect this, but something similar. I was quiet for so long. It makes me so uncomfortable. Not, not the, a real tear, though. like, rehearsed no. pause. Just a sigh. Mm, even though I know this video won't change anyone's mind about me. Opposite. <laughs> I still felt it was important to come on here and defend myself a little. You can gaslight everyone. Accountability. Did she just did, did she just say she say took that. accountability? To anyone out there who has ever is that, is that did did is that what she just said? Did I did I have a stroke? Because I, I'm pretty I think sure words that's what just, she just mean said. different <laughs> things to people like this. I feel like she has a line about that she she already did take accountability, so she doesn't have to anymore. So like what who has ever supported me in any capacity? I really, really appreciate you. Thank you. For what it's worth. She'll group chat you later. I never had any bad intentions. But I do feel like shit. It would be better if you felt like shit because of what you did to these people and not because you I was about to say, them. yeah. Why do you feel like shit? Elaborate. The toxic gossip <laughs> Not the fucking gossip. Chugging down the tracks of misinformation Toxic gossip train You got a one-way ticket to manipulation station Toxic gossip train You tied me to the tracks and harassed me for my past Rumors So she acts like she's going to end it here, but she also rehearsed this in her past, which is where, like, she then starts talking. Look at her. I love, I love the acting of it. Look, she's going to go turn off the camera. Wait a second. Maybe I shouldn't. I want, I, I, I want to, I, I'm going to die. <laughs> acting like she didn't know she was literally going to do that is <laughs> killing me. I don't know. What's she confused about? Because I'm confused um. about a lot more. Sometimes people make a mistake and we it know. doesn't make them a horrible person. Unless it's chronic, then it does. Well, unless you kind of then try and bury them and then you blame know, them on other people and then put out this real like bullshit ukulele song. I mean, sure, fine, okay, bye. Sometimes people can make a mistake and they're still a good person. Crazy, I know. Depends on how many Sometimes mistakes and if you take accountability, but okay. And you don't have to take that mistake on oh, no. Twist it up and grind it and add some lies to it and pulverize it and stab it with knives and ruin a life and oh no sometimes people can make a mistake it doesn't mean you gotta send them hate oh no what can we clarify what the mistakes are? Because I feel like we have not really addressed what these mistakes are because I thought, I thought they were all Just remember lies. that she <laughs> acted like she was going to turn off the camera and then she played the rest of the song. Just remember that because that is epic. I'm not even joking. That is something else. That is some another level of balls it's giving, that I've never It's seen giving before. like the planned, like the TikToks when people like set their phone down before. It's like they have a strategic Oh my like, God, yes. Sometimes people can make a mistake and you can kindly let them know and help them to grow. We, they, people oh. try. I would love to know what the kind version of telling her how, how we would have gotten through to her kindly and had her admit all of her uh, mistakes. Because 
Something tells me that wouldn't have made a difference. And I'm sorry, I guess everybody's definition of kind is different, but like, you know, there are a lot of people who are just like, we've spoken about this, fans of yours that are just heartbroken, genuinely disturbed yeah. by your behavior. And why yeah, not literally coming for you and just being like, dumb idiot. Like they're, they're genuinely giving you their insight and their concerns and you're just writing it off as like well sometimes people make mistakes like yeah we know colleen everybody's made mistakes but the difference is that if they're being presented to you you need to sit with them and you need to understand why so many people are upset right now if you don't get it sit a little longer before you release your ukulele song and it's crazy because that's the biggest thing i think that i've tried to voice and i feel like i haven't really known how to say it but that's the biggest difference between her cancellation and so many others that i've seen is it's not people jumping on a bandwagon to be like, yeah, we hate her too. It's these fans that don't want to hate her or don't want to stop watching. And they're like confused, conflicted and heartbroken because they're realizing she's not the person she portrays herself to be. Then again, I don't know if she's ever portrayed herself to be a great person. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you're gonna sit here and pretend like you did nothing wrong, but then also say that you're taking accountability and then also say that everyone does stuff wrong and uh, like- You know what I assume it is in situations like this? And I've had this theory before when I've seen it in different cancellations and different people apologizing. Like it's a genuine survival tactic. Like maybe it's so fight or flight in this moment and also obviously her judgment's off. We know this from like chronic behavior, but I just mean like, yes, some of it's character, some of it's just who she is, but like she's genuinely trying to survive in her brain. Like trying to be like, no, that wasn't weird. That was just me being a loser. That wasn't weird. That was just me. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's just her trying to not feel like, wow, I did stuff that was so gruesome and horrible. I mean, it's not an excuse. I'm just trying to understand it. No, no, no. But that brings us back to like when we've talked about seeing like a lot of videos on narcissists and stuff. It's that we've gotten to the point where we'll hear someone say something and we're like, they, they can't really think that's like the self-awareness, the lack of self-awareness is just astounding. And then you find out that that is an internal defense mechanism yeah. that their brain is like, they really do think that yeah. they're right here, which is alarming because those kind of people don't usually get help in therapy because they aren't able acknowledge to, the problem. They mask it, so they they don't admit the things that they. And actually do you think, think that this would have seen the light of day if she didn't really believe that it was like it was that bitch? Like no. this song was that. That's the thing. It's like we all feel like we're taking crazy pills watching it. She thinks she's being like that. Well, I'm just gonna tell him the truth, but. I just don't understand how you could think this is the truth when you have so many contradictions in it. And back to the, f the fans wanting an explanation, like then the explanation you're gonna give is just that you were weird and didn't know how to navigate the internet and didn't know it was wrong to talk to children. Like people make mistakes simply because they made a mistake. What mistake, bitch? She's so pretentious, make honestly. Them a terrible human. If you say, if, if you deny them and blame them on other people. The fact that she acknowledged intentions. What do I know? Oh my, nothing, clearly. Fuck me, right? Can you believe she ended it like that? Fuck me, right? Yes, I can. Because the, because the lack, it's exactly like the, the jokes we played from stage earlier. She's not taking this seriously. She thinks she did nothing wrong. How do you actually end the whole situation with, Fuck me, right? It's like, wait, what? This is such a disappointment. Truly. And I know, it, like you said earlier, we have been laughing, but that is what this is. Well, and even just on a basic, like, fuck the creator thing, fuck it, like just a human level. Somebody, or in this case, multiple, multiple people have spent so much of their time trying to get it through your head what you did wrong. And it's literally causing them pain. <laughs> and you are intentionally fucking blind to it. And I think that's fucked up. I genuinely cannot believe that this is the point we've gotten to, but that ending, it's almost like her little theater, I don't think that was rehearsed. I think just judging by it, like that was the only part that seemed not rehearsed. And just the fact that like her mask just like slipped down. <laughs> the most, I was like, that was the most authentic That's what I'm saying. Like her little, like, fuck me, right? Like, girl, what? Like the whole time she's like with her little like shoulders all tucked and her head just down. And she's like, well, you know, this oh, is me, very oh, difficult and whatever. Oh, At the end, she's like, well, fuck me, right? Who even cares? I'm like, girl. Not that it would be any different if she hadn't no. like had so many instances that we've seen of her making fun of fans. But the fact that she's like bitching about getting bullied when she literally 
was bullying her and fans. And is a known bully of, like, every, like, any friend she's ever had online. Trisha <laughs> and the, like, where are you acknowledging the Trisha stuff? Was that a lie to you? I mean, like, fuck her, right? Like, <laughs> just can't get over that lie. I, I was like, oh my God. Wow. Like, wow. The audacity. This podcast is so funny to me because <laughs> just knowing where we started, did we ever think we'd be here? We went through the Try Guys, Def Noodles, now Colleen Ballinger apologizing via ukulele. I mean, wow. I mean, I said earlier, this is the most failed execution of an idea I've seen since Def Noodles. Oh my most. God. <laughs> but this is like literally, what is our life? Can we just like, just imagine, clear your mind. Okay. Your <laughs> All right. Not the activity. Imagine Colleen sitting there. About to post this video. Her husband's right there. Maybe <laughs> her kids are in the background. I don't, I feel like it's probably just her and her husband. No one else is around. And she's like, okay, I'm going to post it. How do you think it's going to go? <laughs> How do you think they really thought this was going to Well, be? she says in the song that she knew that nobody was going to buy it. But there's no way you actually believe that and still post this. That's my mindset. Speaking of, sh should I do a quick scroll if there's oh any my great God, comments? No. Well, there's already proof out there. She's obviously deleting a bunch of comments. But you cannot. And I mean, you cannot find a positive comment. Like, I, I dare you. I triple dog dare you. Is the accountability in the room right now? <laughs> literally, so, to pull out a ukulele in this situation is bonkers. I mean, it literally is bonkers. That is the that is the word. No, people are losing it. They're having a field day. I mean, you'd think after all these years, YouTubers would have learned how to make a proper apology by now. The irony in that one is that Miranda, like the Miranda Sing show has this whole skit where she like holds up, you know, people like dress up as YouTube things for Halloween. It's just like piece of like cardboard and they cut it out and it's an apology video where she's like making fun of like no you need to cry more and spraying tears on their face and i'm like hmm, maybe you should have gone with your the own thing idea is that i definitely understand the feeling that she must have in this situation which is even if she sat down and did a quote unquote perfect apology Yes, it still would not have been enough for everybody. But I think that a part of apologizing and genuinely apologizing in a situation is understanding the forgiveness doesn't come with that. An apology doesn't come with automatic forgiveness and it shouldn't. And you should have to prove yourself and you should understand that. And that's like just the base level of a genuine apology. This is like so far from that's that. That's what but I said even about the court thing. If she was willing to go to court to like, br like bring defamation against people that are posting screenshots of her conversations, then I had said like, if she's willing to put the effort and time and money into that, like it, that tells me everything I need to know about the kind of person she is because that's not someone that is trying to take accountability. That's someone that's trying to make this situation go away. And that's exactly what she's doing. And I just read a comment that says, girl, this ain't camp rock. Put the guitar down. Honestly, this is so far from, like I wasn't sure what her response would be, but this is so far from what I thought it would be. I thought it would be this like carefully crafted, heavily edited thing with a bunch of proof that was defending the fact that maybe everything was Photoshopped that we've seen. This is so far from any of that, that um, all I can say is wow. And um, mm, yeah. One person that said, it's a less just joke comment, but says, it's not entertainment for us, Colleen. If there's gaps, please show us the receipts or show us with receipts like everyone else is. Where are the lies? I want proof, not just a but song. But yeah, it's a lot of bad comments. And um, I don't know where she goes from here, honestly, but that's it. <laughs> that's 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 her apology and um you guys i don't know if you can call it seeing it because we paused every five seconds but we had a lot of thoughts and i'm sorry i mean it's just like not our fault we couldn't get through a line without uh, picking up like a blatant I lie know. or contradiction and she's just preying on the like cancel culture propaganda that's what she's banking on is that everyone's just gonna be like oh the woke mob is coming to get her no she's gonna be talking about the matrix in the next couple weeks mark my words oh my god i literally at the beginning of this i was gonna say okay so what do we think her next pipeline is gonna be is she gonna go religious family vlogger or do we think she'll go um red pill because i'm thinking red pill with all the cancel culture talk. probably pearl <laughs> do you need a co-host <laughs> what a journey i feel like i say that after the end of every colleen episode but really what a journey am i wrong like I, I mean, and I want to reiterate, I know I've been literally making jokes this entire Not time funny. because yeah. I can't, my brain can't comprehend Same. how you could be this out of touch for something so serious. And I, I like, I'm short circuiting. It doesn't, it's not making yeah, sense. Yeah, but... Obviously, I mean, I feel like our coverage of it and stuff throughout this, yes, we're laughing at the ukulele because how the fuck can you not? But 
But at the same time, we do understand, obviously, how serious the situation is. I mean, how can anybody witnessing it not understand that? And it's just really unfortunate to know that she like went this route. I mean, it's not just unfortunate. It's actually unfathomable and so bizarre. Yeah, truly. I don't know what I was expecting. But exactly. And I'm sure a lot of you guys feel the same way. But um, let us know what you think about her ukulele song? Question mark? I don't know. Uh, ukuleles are fun and I love them, but comically small, no? They're not meant for these kind of situations. I feel like she's it was sacrilegious. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's all we have for you today. Um, wish Lily well on her move. Next time you see us, she will be moved. So, Godspeed, girl. Oh my god, I hope no other videos come out because I don't think I have the capacity to handle it Well, anymore. But if they do, we'll be here. Ukulele song after ukulele song. We will cover it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. If you made it till the end, thank you. We appreciate you. And that's all we have for you. We will see you on Monday, hopefully. I'm, yeah, what she said. Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs>